Welcome back. Uh, this is part two, and this is Kitty No. Part two of putting this little uh, recycled paper towel junk journal together. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to put this back on here, how to stabilize it, how to get ready for your signatures, how to put your signatures together, uh, just kind of what kind of papers that I used and how I made my little ties. Oh, and while I was doing this, I, I just got a little carried away because I did have a whole bunch of paper towels. Anyway, so I've got, I made four more of these. I think they're just super cute. Fun ties, batik ties. This one says, start doing things you love, never give up. Creativity takes courage. When nothing is sure, everything is possible. I love that one. Uh, and then this one keeps some room in your heart for the unimaginable. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do these, and I am going to list these in my Etsy shop. So, uh, anyway, I'll see you at the sewing machine and at my cutting table. For this little back part, I cut my fabric two and a half by four and a fourth. I just wanted some overhang on over onto the front of it and the back of it and at the ends. Uh, and so I'm just doing a little straight stitch, kind of a messy stitch with some extra strings hanging off. And so this project is a combination of, like I've made journals for a while and then, you know, I watch, there's some people on YouTube and on Instagram that I watch. And so it's kind of a, it's almost like the rest of everything. It's just kind of a combination of, a whole bunch of different techniques but anyway so I'm, I'm doing just two rows of straight stitches with the threads uh, oops got that and kind of tangled up uh, on both of the sides and on the top and the bottom and I also I tore the fabric instead of just cutting it because I wanted it to have that kind of raggedy messy it kind of goes with the rest of the journal Then I pull out so I have strings hanging out here and there. All right, and so my next step is going to be to put some uh, little pieces of pretty stiff interfacing. I'm using Fabric Fusion, and you can use Fabri Tac. And I've cut those oh, the width of the back. I think maybe about a an inch and three four something like that. And then I just, I had just an extra piece, so I just gave it a little extra support. Uh, made sure that I had it space to, to wrap around to the, to the front of the front and the back. So a little fabric tack there along that stitching line. Make sure it's right side up. At this point, it doesn't really matter if it's right side up or not. A little fabric tack on the back, right along that stitching line. And put that in place. <clears throat> and I'm not ready to add that on yet because I need to put my liner on the insides of my covers so it's going to tap that all in place and um, lay it down so it can dry make sure I put it where it's not going to stick to my paper that's protecting my table so that'll take just a minute or two for it to dry then I'm so while it's drying I'm going to measure Again, it's three and a half. And so what is it? You know, measure tw twice, cut once. And my paper actually was seven inches wide, so it was exactly the right width. I didn't know that. I had to cut a little bit off of the uh, the ends of it, but that's okay. And so I'm just going to glue that down. And I poke some holes and then so I could cut out for where my little uh, ties are going to go. To glue my liner on the back of the cover, on the inside of the cover, I used uh, Elmer's Craft Bond Heavy Duty Glue. And you can see it by my fingertips, you can see where I hole punched and cut out for those little ends so that I could put my ties in there. So do that on both sides. I think this is just a really fun little journal, just using everything, just stuff that I had around, and even the scrapbook paper that I used for the liner was stuff that I'd had for a while. 
Okay, now then I can put the other piece of fabric on. And so put the glue on all of the surfaces and on the ends to make sure that it's all stuck down really good. And this is going to make a good support for our stitching uh, when we stitch our signatures in. So I'm going to let that dry really well before I stitch the signatures in, so I'm going to go and make my signatures. And that's also from stashes of paper that I've had for a while. I've got coffee dye paper. I have done that in a video for y'all. I also have some mixed media paper. That's a piece of vintage watercolor paper. Some packing material. I don't know what. It's kind of a waxy looking brown paper. Lots of uh, jelly plate paper, some regular copy paper, and some cardstock. And so now I just need to go through and I'm going to cut it uh, a little less than the width. The book is three and a half, so I'm cutting my papers at three and a fourth wide. And then they will be mm, 12 inches maximum long. And some of them I might, uh, you know, cut a little shorter than that just so that everything is not all exactly the same length. So cardstock, regular copy paper. Some of the, uh, and I'm putting three signatures in here, and each signature will have ten sheets, just random sheets. And so now I'll stack them. I'll try to uh, make sure that all of my stacks are not all the same on each stack. So I'm cutting this paper 12 inches wide, and then, uh, or 12 inches long and three and a half wide. Oh, that was kind of neat paper. I've never seen that before. It looks like craft paper, except it almost looks like it has a waxy surface, but it's not wax. It's it's really it's really kind of an unusual paper. I don't know what that is. Anyway, so here I've stacked all my papers together. I've I folded them individually, one at a time. You know, put them all in the stacks, arranged like I wanted them, and then I stacked them together. And so now I've got three signatures, and I'm ready to stitch those in place. And I'm going to use. Uh, some baker's twine to stitch those in place, black and white baker's twine. I think that'll be kind of fun. I've made me a little template. Then that the template is the size of the space between the two covers. And so now I'm just marking the halfway and then uh, about another halfway between. There's probably a quarter of an inch between each of these marks. So a definite halfway and then I just folded the paper in half again to get those other sections. Find my needle that's big enough and I, I want to make sure that I have probably like three times or four times the length. Baker's twine is cheap and you can get that at Dollar Tree. and uh, uh, So I want to make sure it's long enough for me to tie off and then also, and that's what I'm doing now is just measuring to make sure my other ones are the same length. Now I'm I'm on a cutting board that has grids on it, so I could just measure that way, but this was easier for me to do. So I've got a nice big needle. I think it's a tapestry needle, so it has a large eye for me to get that thread through. I still have a little bit of a trouble here and there getting it to behave and go through. I, probably if I had a needle threader. You didn't see me licking that thread and biting it, right? We don't actually really do that, do we? Yes, we do. Okay, so and... Uh, I didn't tie a knot in the end, and I'm just going to make sure, but I'm going from the front side to the back side because I want to tie off on the front side. And I'm going to do all three of my stitches first, make sure that I don't pull that all the way through. A little pair of pliers might help. And I repeat that step two more times, so I've got three strings going through there for three signatures. And I'm going to work from the inside, and I'll just start with the first one, find the middle of that, open it out, and slide it under. Be careful that you don't pull the threads through. Yes, yes, yes. And then flip that around and tie it. And I'm going to tie it with a knot towards the top, because I'm going to dangle some beads. And so kind of even those up a little bit. They're not perfectly even. 
but if you do even them up really good, then uh, when you go to put some beads on there, it makes it easier to run through. So there it is like that. And so like if you're going to decorate these pages, it makes it really easy. It's kind of like a traveler's notebook. It makes it easy for you to pull those pages out, decorate them, and then slide them back in. Anyway, that's the way that I'll do mine. And you know, I think I'm going to put this for sale in my Etsy store at my hall closet. I'll put the link for that in the description box below. And because uh, I'm going to make a, a few more of these, but I'll have this one for sale. So there's my third signature going in. And some of those pages are painty papers, and some of them are plain papers, so you can actually write on them, or you can come back and add your own embellishments, add some more things to them. Uh, so whatever you'd like to use your little journal for. So they're, now they're all tied off. I'm going to put some beads on there and a little charm. There it is. It's so stinking cute. I love it. All right, there's my, uh, there's the charms that I put on there, some little beads, and then I put a little key on there. And sorry that I'm out of the frame, there it is. And then I just took some more of the batik fabric in the kind of a coral color, because there's a little bit of touch of coral on that, or orange on that front cover. And uh, I tore it into some thin strips. I think this was out of a package of like batik strips that I got at Walmart. A while back, like I say, most of this stuff I've had for a while, I did not buy anything for this project at all. So I'm going, putting the ties on the front and on the back, and then I will tie it together with a little bow. Um, and then, so I'm going from the underside, no, I'm going from the top side down, because I, I tried it both ways, and I liked it better with going from the from the top to the inside and then that way whenever I pull through I just like the finish of the way that that looked a whole lot better. Anyway I'll tie that up with a little bow to close it up and it's got some room on the inside to add all of the embellishments and stuff. Well I think this turned out super cute and I'm so glad that I salvaged those uh, paper towels from the from the trash bin. Anyway uh, and just use that little bit of batik ribbon to tie this off. I just think these turned out so cute, and they're going to be so fun to work with. You can the, the pages are where you can pull a page out and paint on it and embellish it and then uh, put it right back in its place or rearrange the pages the way that you like. I think this is just too, too fun. I want to thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, give me that thumbs up, you know, all the stuff. Hit that notification bell. Anyway, uh, I have made four of these, and I am going to put these in my Etsy shop, so just kind of a real quick preview. This one's got some little bead dangles and a little key on the end of it, and there's three signatures in here. This one has a clock and some little kind of almost looking tie-dye looking beads on there, and uh, so that one will be in there. I don't think I'm going to sell this one. I think I'm going to keep this one for me. Then this one will be in there. This one has a a little gear hanging on the end of it, and then some little uh, glass beads. And there she goes. Bye bye, kitty no. And then the little beads that are on the end of this one. Uh, these are just super cute. Like I said, three signatures, all kinds of papers that are in there for the signatures. You can write on these. There's space for you to write, or you can pull them out. The sheets pull them out individually, paint on them, or you can just stick stuff in there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, like, subscribe, hop over to my hall closet and subscribe to my email list. I, don't, I promise I won't send you a ton of stuff, but I have some free stuff in my uh, resource library. And I will see you next time. Bye.